Let's get more on the outlook for gold. For that, we're joined by one of the titans of the industry. Sean Boyd is the CEO of Agnico Eagle Mines, Canada's fourth largest gold producer, beating analyst estimates in the second quarter as it increased production and lowered cash operating costs. Sean, great to see you. Welcome to the show. So higher gold prices led you to better than expected revenues in the second quarter, but you just heard Don's report. Some of the analysts are forecasting lower prices for gold now. So what are your expectations for, you know, from the front lines? What are you expecting for gold? here going forward? Well, I think we're in the traditionally uh, low point of the season uh, for gold prices is usually uh, July, August. The, the strongest period historically on a seasonal basis is September, October. So I wouldn't write gold off yet. Uh, let's get through September, October uh, and see how we do. But we're certainly expecting it as we move towards the end of the year to retest the all-time highs in the 1260 range. And uh, for those that think gold is in a bubble, I think they're wrong. And uh, let's see how the rest of the year plays out here. For those who are a little more bearish on gold prices, and if gold prices do ultimately fall considerably, just playing what if here, what is your strategy for offsetting that decline? What would, uh, what would the well, strategy be to come to pass to offset that? Well, from our perspective, we've been in a massive growth phase over the last several years. Uh, we're just finishing um, the completion of our fifth new mine that uh, we've commissioned in the last two years. We made the production decisions on those mines to start building them several years ago when gold was under $500. So these are robust deposits. Uh, we'll stu still do well going forward because of the low cost structure. Uh, it really wouldn't change what we're doing because we're looking to grow again through internal expansion of these mines uh, so there's still some growth to come and it'll be lower cost high rate of return growth because they're at assets we already own. So you had all six of your mines in production during the latest quarter but as you are aware some of the analysts are concerned about costs with two mines in particular so what are you doing to bring those operating costs down? Well, they'll, they'll come down on a unit cost basis as the uh, production expands at both of those mines. And uh, for the one in Finland, it's really an issue in the plant on recovering the gold from the ore and a percentage of gold that gets recovered. Uh, that's seen a dramatic improvement in the last uh, 40 days, so we expect a significant increase in output at that mine as we go through the second half of this year, as do we at our Meadowbank mine, which has only been in production for four months. So these are mines that have still not hit their stride. So production will increase there. Um, so we're actually looking for a significant bump in second half output which will see our unit cost to produce each ounce of gold decline over what we experienced in the first half of this year. And Agnico Eagle is sticking by its full year forecast to produce more than one million ounces of gold. Who's buying that gold? Where is the strongest demand? Well, it's, um, it's just been investment demand over the last several years. We've seen gold up each year over the last 10 years. So uh, it, the gold market was really driven for many, many years by fabrication demand. That's been replaced in the last few years by investment demand. And uh, it goes up and down. So, you know, we're not arguing that it can be a volatile commodity to be in. But I think you look at gold as more of a long-term play rather than a short-term trading opportunity. Um, so we think investment demand is still going to be there because the underlying issues that got us to this gold price still haven't been solved around the world. So we think there's going to be continued financial uncertainty as we move forward. Now, to understand your business better, you're quoted earlier and you were starting to explain to me just a moment ago, four of Agnico Eagle's mines are operating at a steady state with the other two in late stages of optimization. So how much gold is left to mine and, and when will you have to expand beyond these six mines? Uh, well, as we look out, we've got um, a mine life um, collectively with all of our mines at well over 15 years, just including the gold reserves. If we add the resources, it's much longer than that. Um, so we've got long life assets. They're brand new. Um, we're still optimizing them in terms of cost, but we've already started looking at uh, expansions at the newly built mines. Um, and uh, that's because the reserves have grown at these mines. So our basis for growth over the next five years and the basis for our strategy to build the company and continue to build it is with internal expansions at the existing mines. And we'll be laying out our plans for three uh, new expansions at three of these mines over the next 12 months. All right. Thank you so much for your time. And information, Sean Boyd is the CEO of Agnico Eagle Mines.